You're listening to Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. ICO token sale, hype or hope? The Status Network could be the face space on F. Ethereum on the Chinese exchanges. Enter the dragon. All this and more on episode 209 on Wednesday, May 31st, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,268.60. Silver's up to $17.31. Oil is down to $48.63. The Dow is up to 21,008 points. The 30-year treasury yield is down to 2.866%. Well, awesome, Darren. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin is down to $2,272. Litecoin is down to $25.27. Ethereum up to $230. Dash down to $135. Zcash is down to $239. And Monero is down to $41.91. I tell you, JJ, one of these things is not like the other. No, in fact, this episode is basically focused on Ethereum. Now, a couple points first. Neocash Radio, we've been going for about four years. And we have put out a lot of shows, obviously, but this last month, uh, I want to I want to just point out, and we don't really talk about our downloads or things like that, but just our Libsyn downloads has topped uh, ten thousand for this last month. So we're really happy about that. Really happy with a lot of people you, listening. Listeners. And now, of course, we're on YouTube. We're on a couple other platforms too. And I don't really aggregate all the the totals because I'm. I, I guess I really don't pay attention to that we're as, busy. as much as I should. Yes, we're busy people. But so, anyway. So, JJ, do you think it's because I started doing the show every week? I think it's your I think, voice. I, I, think. Well, I think Pedro brings something special. And you know what? Pedro, if you've noticed, Pedro kind of focuses on one thing in particular. What, what do you really focus on, Pedro? Ethereum. That's right. That, yeah. I, I, I really like the platform. It's, it's amazing. So it's this show is uh, basically about Ethereum because of all the news that we have to talk about. And starting out right out the top, a lot of stuff. If you're on Reddit and you're an S trader, uh, give a shout out to Neocash Radio. Uh, a lot of these stories well, came from that area and the discussions and things like that. But starting out the ICO madness as BAT sells out in 24 seconds. That's right. So what is BAT? Now, BAT is the, uh, we've talked about Brave Browser's recent switch from Bitcoin to Ethereum on episode 200, and we first discussed the Brave Browser actually on episode 167, way back in August. It was Randy's first show with us. Oh. Yeah. Most notably, it was an incredibly smaller number of participants with this sort of uh, crowd sale, but the BAT token represents a uh, basic attention token. So it's it's how advertisers would spend these tokens or they'd buy the tokens and then use them to put ads in front of eyes. Okay. And then people who then watch these ads, I believe they get those tokens and then they go to a publisher to pay for content with these tokens. And then the publisher pays the advert or the advertiser buys it from the publisher to put in front of eyes or something like that. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? It seems like more of a um that sounds like a, actually a good idea. So yes. <laughs> So that's what the Brave, uh, the BAT is. And so the Brave browser is a special browser, a, a separate browser designed to obviously view the internet and all that it is. Um, but it's changed the way that advertisements are placed in front of viewers. And in the Brave browser actually was running on Bitcoin because of the, the really quick and uh, awesome microtransaction capability that Bitcoin once had and no longer has. So they've made the switch to Ethereum with this token sale. Now, this token sale was exceptional. The token generation event raised $36 million in three Ethereum blocks, and the blocks were found fast in just 24 seconds. Isn't Normally, it, that would be 45 Ethereum, seconds. Isn't Ethereum awesome for that? The oh. entire $1 billion, uh, 1 billion tokens are consolidated, were consolidated among just 190 addresses initially. There's also two addresses for the dev tokens, which is another half billion. Leading up to the, the uh, token generation events, there were some uh, people on Reddit upset. Now, obviously, I'm not <laughs> saying that the people on Reddit speak for everybody, but the, uh, this brings up a good conversation point. The numerous last-minute changes. Over a month ago, the BAT team announced the funds ra- fundraising goal of $15 million, with a cap of, uh, at that point, 700 million tokens. Now, the goal was changed uh, nine days away from the, uh, the token sale to $24 million goal with a billion tokens and uh, half billion developer tokens. So, and then two days before, prior to the event, it basically was effectively changed by pegging the price of Ethereum 
at that point at, at one hundred and fifty three dollars. So at the time, Ethereum was about one hundred and two hundred and thirteen dollars uh, in that in that space, depending on where you were going for it, of course. And you could get six hundred uh, sixty four hundred bat for one Ethereum. Now they've raised thirty six million dollars worth of S and presumably more with the rise in price, far more than two times their original goal. Now the trend of token sales with elevator caps has seen Mysterium raise their cap from ten to fourteen in their their sellout, which took about 40, 45 minutes. The storage raised their cap prior to their token sale. Status, which we're going to talk about later, had initially planned a cap of ten million, but that has changed to a soft cap of twelve million with hidden hard caps. That's right, multiple hard caps. Now I believe the idea behind the multiple hard caps is it it it, it forces a whale from buying all of it at once. Now, this is something we saw with the BAT token. Once again, only 190 people actually got BAT tokens during this token sale. Right. That's that's not a very diversified no, no. group. And and I, I do see that as, as a bit of a problem because, you know, very few people could move the value of that because so few of them own it. Right. So so that 36, uh, you know, $36 million uh, basically... You extrapolate that over the amount of tokens in circulation or that were produced at that point. Um, even if they're not in circulation, they're locked up for only six months uh, or something like that. I, I don't recall for that particular one. But, of course, I, in Mysterium, of course, they did the same thing, raised their cap, and they sold out again. 40 minutes, really short time. Um, the storage one, actually, they didn't sell out right away. That, that, that uh, sale went, for, went on for quite a while. And, in fact, they had pegged the... Um, the number of to- the, the tokens were pegged to dollar price, so it's fifty cents a token. And as Ethereum rose, you got more tokens per Ethereum because it was worth more dollars. Right. So there were people upset about that, which you know they're they're crying for no reason at all. But so this does tell us, you know, one thing, and that's there's this big big demand for getting into this crypto market. That's I mean, right. The mo- there, money is just flooding in. There is big demand, Pedro. You're 100% right. But uh, the question should be asked, is this demand misplaced? Is it that, not that, always... Right. That, 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 is a, that is a very good point. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's well-placed, or it, 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 but it does show in well, raw numbers that there's a lot of money coming in, and things are really happening fast and loose. And, you know, I think like we mentioned on all shows... Um, you know, you should be careful and investigate, you know, what is this group? What's, you know, what's their reputation? What past projects and have they done? I, I think that this is, you know, the risk on all of these is, is quite severe. And uh, I mean, and, and just the fact that some of these could be fly by night things, other ones not, I mean. Well, in that respect, I, I, I do want to give uh, respect where it's due. The, the, the bat token is working with the brave browser now the brave browser is already working it's already yeah. functioning and there are you know they, they've already proven that model and, mm-hmm. and, it, and you know they have users and they have people and now switching over to ethereum is just going to make that whole i think it's going to really help them yeah so I, like I this is so exceptional too. yes you're right and and maybe the value is warranted maybe that 36 million dollars will be applied but you could tell i'll tell you what folks neocash radio is going to be paying attention to the uh the, these big token sale people and if there's any sort of uh, so at shenanigans, what, we'll definitely report on it. At one, at what point will one of these ICOs come out and say we we want to raise five hundred million dollars? Well, see, and, the, and maybe it'll take. Well, then you get back you know, into the Dow days, or thirty minutes to happen. <laughs> the DAO time. Well, we raised one hundred and fifty million dollars in like you know no time no time flat really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all this is no time flat. I so mean, right, relative. even if it took you three weeks to raise like fifty million, that's still dang good. Yeah. So um, there's a, you know, I just want to take a moment to point out that, that the ICO is a term, that there's a difference between the, the terms here. So an ICO is a term used for the launch of a new blockchain. The launch of a new token is actually termed a token generation event. Some of them are, are getting a little more sneaky and calling it a contribution event because they don't want to get into the whole legal of... Uh, you know, this it, it, right, is it an ownership share of a, of a corporation? But it's a token. Ge- you're making a token. You're generating it, and it's an event. That's basically what it is. Uh, these are distinctly different events. Now, initial coin offerings refer to new blockchain spawning. These sort of events often require more resources and commitment. You're talking about miners. You're talking about getting a bunch of nodes going, things like that. Now, token generation events are often created... A, um, creating a mass of tokens that will be used on top of a, an existing and often well-established blockchain. In the case of the tokens we talked about earlier in the show, Ethereum is that blockchain. 
So now I want to talk a little bit more about Ethereum. And we, we got into the ICO and we talked about, oh, look at all this hype and lots of them selling out. But what success rate, if we're going to actually talk about data, now we're not telling you to buy into anything. I'm simply looking at data. And there's a, there's a website called ICO versus S. I believe, is that what it's called? No, cost, ICOstats.com. And they have a, uh, we'll have a link on our blog, neocashradio.com. And so basically they have a list of, of a bunch of ICOs and their profit, their ROI, and then they, they peg them against S or Bitcoin. And S is doing really well. Well, I mean, S is winning most of these. You know what I'm saying? Look at it. Like, just go check it out for yeah, yourself. Yeah, so I, I see it. Uh, yeah. I uh, mean, it really speaks of the, you know, the versatility and, and, of the platform. And sure. And, and now, now factor this in. Swarm, really, you know, it's just sort of getting going. It's it's like, it's not really happening yet. Uh, the... Um, the other the other components uh, that, that are coming with Metropolis, and uh, then eventually the proof of stake. You know, there's a lot with Ethereum that isn't even rolling yet. So, like, it's amazing to see some of these these tokens and coins compared from a uh, return on investment standpoint. But of course, I mean, I don't know how exactly how accurate this data is, and I don't, I haven't looked into how they're measuring things and whatnot. But well, one thing I'm excited about is price aside. I'm excited about a lot of these projects succeeding and breathing and breathing, you know, bringing in a lot of new cool functionality to Ethereum. Right. So let's talk about one of those new projects, and it's called the Status Network. It's built as a socioeconomic network based off of private messaging uh, platform. So now the network runs on a mobile OS built for Ethereum, and the coming token sale will sell off the Status Network token starting in uh, June seventeenth. So the, the status network token will be used to power the status clients and including governance of the status clients and, and basically modeling where its development goes. Uh, there's a decentralized push notification market. And an interesting tactic they took with this is that you have to pay for your push notifications, which means you have to go to, out to a bunch of uh, providers. You have to figure out which ones you want, and you can have them compete against each other and then get, get it for the best price. But then it's all opt in you know what i'm saying at that point it's it's you're opting into these things uh community creation of content you know that sort of looks like uh the steam it sort of situation fiat to crypto a uh, teller network so it basically it, it includes local bitcoins right in your messenger app uh dap directory so like uh, basically like a browser so you can do stuff on the internet of course like any browser would but then if you navigate to a dap uh Direct a direct DAP site, then you'll, you'll be able to interact with that DAP. So the uh, status network aims to connect users, apps, market functions, and more through a discrete messaging service using the Whisper protocol built into Ethereum. So it's, I think this is a really interesting and potentially powerful piece that really glues together all the other parts of Ethereum. But most importantly, it connects users. The fact that it's it starts out primarily as a messaging app is a big thing because there are a lot of people I know and myself, including looking at getting away from Facebook and getting away from the, the open, open air uh, communications methods, right? Getting more into uh, encrypted methods. And the Whisper, of course, Whisper is a, a private encrypted messaging service built into Ethereum. So, bam, there you go. Pedro, you got some stories. Let's talk about what you got. Yeah, sure. Uh, so... Chinese digital currency exchanges Huboi and OKCoin to list Ether. From This is from ethnews.com. So starting May 31st, uh, Ether will be offered on both of these exchanges in China. So it really opens up the, the Chinese market. So the Huboi digital currency exchange uh, recently announced that Ether would be available for trading on its platform starting May 31st at um, you know 12 p.m. or GMT plus 8. Uh, the first of China's big three digital currency exchanges to offer Ether, Huawei's announcement on May 27th could potentially have already contributed to the recent spike in the price of Ether, which saw the same-day recovery of 40%. Per Huawei's official Twitter account, quote, there are, so many, uh, there are many aspects of the Ethereum that could, be out, that could outperform Bitcoin, such as scalability, cost, and speed. Okay, Coin, <laughs> uh, which is Huawei's main rival, will begin offering Ether... Um, so today, May 31st, at um, 22 hours, GMT plus 8. Uh, while Ether trading will officially commence on June 1, 
Uh, last year's decision by China's big three, uh, BTCC being the third, to forego listing Ether prompted many Chinese investors to use workaround trading strategies such as buying Bitcoin and using Shapeshift or other exchanges to convert it to Ether. If true, this type of buying might have created an artificial relationship between Bitcoin and Ether, which could potentially dissolve now that Chinese consumers can purchase Ether directly. Yeah, that's huge news. There's a huge market. Yeah, I mean, th th this opens up, you know, a, a huge crypto market. Well, uh, in similar trade, uh, you know, trade-related news, GDAX, uh, the U.S.-based exchange, has recently announced a euro to Ether and euro to Litecoin pairs. So, um, you know, make, you know, another method that Europeans with euros uh, can, you know, get into uh, getting Ether. Okay, th this brings up an interesting point that I want to briefly talk about is that there's a person that I know that is newly getting the crypto. Of course, this person is 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 in my friends and that has no has known a lot, but has never bought any, has never got into them, and asked me earlier today uh, about okay, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin, and I basically, you know, Litecoin. I'm still at they have Segwit activated, right? And their yep. their their prices is, is, you know, it's down. It's it's basically down to their their, their pre high. Their pre high was basically their, the high was what thirty five forty, I believe. What what would you think would happen to the price of Litecoin if Bitcoin uh, Core and all the other teams looking to scale Bitcoin finally came out with something unified to fix Bitcoin? I think if if Bitcoin got, if that if Bitcoin was healthier, Litecoin would go down to to eight to twelve dollars. I think, right. I think that's that's basically it. It's it's a it's a playground for Segwit, and like they should be really trying out. At, they should really be building that up just as a test net. I mean, it's a live public test net of an established coin, a, a coin that you know many exchanges deal with. Uh, right. You know, um, you know where you can trade. So this, you know what? This could be the shadow, like the dark horse. <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine like all of a sudden there's all these like innovation that happens with the Segwit and, and then like, someone no. figures some way to make it really awesome and bam, it's just like, oh. Well, yeah. Next thing you know, we were all just using Litecoin again. <laughs> oh. Strange how that works. And uh, <laughs> so there's more to talk about here on Neocash Radio. As always, you can check out our blog at neocashradio.com. And if you if you paid attention, you saw I had a, a little show that came out earlier, the first uh, crypto market report, and it was the day that big crash happened, and there was like, well, you know, I, I wanted to to do something. I wanted to start doing more small shows as news becomes available and as, as I have time. Yeah. If I had time, and, and honestly, if, if I had time and the financial incentive from our donations, I would be doing a crypto market report every morning. With, All right. With, before or after coffee. So hear that, listeners. I it, would do it after. I, I, but I, I get up early. That's I'm right. a witness to this, and it's on. It's recorded and released and in your ears right now. Now, so. I, I don't have a number, of course, mm -hmm. but that number usually starts right. out small or, and then grows. I don't know. Yeah, just send your offer to Darren at neocashradio.com. What, what? How much do you want to employ JJ to do a market well, yeah, see, every I, day. I created my own ad. I created a couple new addresses and I put them on that thing and didn't get anything. But that's fine. I'm not, you know, we're so used to not getting donations here at New <laughs> Cash Radio. <laughs> yeah. It's a labor of love here. It is. It is. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, I mean, I, that's it's exciting. And uh, you called it a crash a little bit earlier, JJ, but uh, I, you know, maybe. I call it a correction. You because know, the that's price the went too high, and now it's went down. That's, and, but the thing is, it's still significantly higher than it was. It's, it wasn't a correction. A correction would have been a like a, a more market or smaller. I, I'm sorry, uh, movement, a step down, or maybe a couple steps down. It was, it was the new investors watching the price fall. After like, oh my god, this is great! Wow, look at this price! It's great! Oh, Whoa, oh my! You mean it also? Oh my god! I put way too much in. I gotta get out! I gotta get out! And like, you mean it also goes down? What? Right, right, <laughs> right! And you know what? New invest. If you're new out there and you're you're just getting into this stuff and and you're listening to all our ICO talk and you're like, oh, I want to get rich too. Guess what? A lot of crypto in the history of the the, the the show, a lot of crypto is down. Let me just tell you. Man, that you you must have a good uh, a good intestinal fortitude. All right, you, you, to should, deal with crypto. you should look at what crypto you want to invest in, and and have some you know I don't want to say faith, but you've done an analysis and you've compared it to others, and you know you're speculating, and and, and but you think that this one might be better, and and it's going to be better in a year. Well, if it's going to be better in a year, 
don't, you know, you should avoid panic selling when it goes down because you're not in it for the week. If, yeah. It, it, but that is a different strategy. So you have to determine which one you're in. If you're in the daily strategy, then, you know, you can lose. Good luck. Yeah, I help. I, I can't done. help you. We can't. No, well, but we're not advising you to do anything. Right. But if you feel that a crypto has long term potential, then you have to look at it as long term. And like JJ said, you have to kind of bear through some of the painful days. I am a big fan of the the distant horizon, and, and distant is at least a year or two, which is forever in Bitcoin land and crypto world. But you know, and. and Generally, I mean, you let a year go by and then reassess and see, oh, is this, was I right? Is this the thing that works? And, you know, should I switch to something else? And, uh, yeah, you just you, you, you don't have to watch it in the, between, in the meantime unless, you use, unless you're using it. Uh, uh, you don't have to watch or, the price or, you know, at all. You know, another strategy that some people I know use is they, they have more funds in something they hold long term. And they have a small amount of funds that they do some more occasional trades. And, and that way, if, you know, they don't make out, um, you know, they didn't lose so much. But if they do make out, then you're like, wow, I turned a little bit into, you know, a little more. So, uh, you know, that's another strategy. But you you have to really identify what kind of risk you're willing to take and, and how you want to deal with it. Yeah. So and, uh, and there's many layers to this risk. Let's be honest about that, too. If you're new to the trading, like there's... <laughs> There's a task. There's a tax risk. Okay. There's if you want to cash out and you want to deal with the uh, the tax system, you're going to have a risk there. There's ta- there's uh, maybe your jurisdiction. You know, there's there's places where certain crypto and certain programs aren't allowed, but because of the nature of blockchains, it's really hard to sort of filter that, right? Right. So there's there's many layers of risk that you have to assess if when you're making the choice to do some of these these gambling. Let's face it, this is and, a lot of gambling. And with with all the tokens on on Ethereum now, uh, is one of them actually seriously in use? Is one whatever good or service storage is, coin storage can i get storage now with storage coin currently yes they they've released the i, I believe they just released the well, they uh, just Ethereum had their token yeah no the token isn't quite yet uh tradable but i mean can i as a, as somebody who wants to purchase a good or a service can mm-hmm. i get the storage service it's it's so storage yeah. started out um uh, as it's i believe as its own um uh, blockchain just yeah, like it, CR? Well, no, it was um, it's or on top it, of Bitcoin. Oh, oh, that's right. It's counterparty. That's counterparty, right. Counterparty. Yep. So a counterparty, they're they're migrating from counterparty to oh, Ethereum. So you okay. could still get counterparty. Okay. I, I imagine you could still get yeah, counterparty. Yeah. So and, and it'll be service. traded one for one for the price of right. you know, the new coin. Okay. So you're 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 telling me that storage is up and running on the counterparty platform, and they're migrating to Ethereum. That's right. Yes. Because obviously Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, no. it, uh, Ethereum is they, they, so the they have, flavor they of the have a client. They have a client. You can pay that. for storage, and if you host storage, you get paid. Um, but the, the way I understand that is, you have to run your system twenty four seven for over a month, and then they calculate like how much bandwidth and you know how much you you store it for others, and and you get storage coins. Okay. Wow. So yeah, uh, other than that, you know, I've seen some uh, renders on the Golem subreddit. There's people rendering out. Uh, this is what I've rendered with the Golem, and blah blah blah. Um, <clears throat> there isn't a whole lot now. Now this brings up an interesting point, and this is something I've been wanting to talk about: is Gnosis. Why is the Gnosis token so expensive? Now I understand economically why it's so expensive because someone is willing to pay that much for it. I get that. But why do they believe it has this much value? Can you use Gnosis right now to do anything? Is it functional like Augur? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not aware that it is. I've I've gone to it in in MetaMask with Chrome, and I I I still haven't yet seen a whole lot that I can do with it. Um. So that's it's my my question is why is it so valued? Do I understand it, there's uh, only 1.1 million in circulating supply right now. But look at look at that's oh, that's a fraction of the total reserve. So when we say prediction market, uh, might they be heavy in like the gambling aspect of the prediction market? It well, they're they're clearly gambling with this price. I don't know. I wouldn't pay two hundred fifty three dollars for Gnosis. And now I'm not telling you what to buy or sell. Believe me. But I know crazy when I see it. Yeah. I, I don't know why it's that valuable. It doesn't make any sense. And now I'm not knocking the platform at all. I, I'm just like. 
Is this vaporware? Does this functional? Is this working? Or, I, I, or, or might maybe people think it really has good potential. Yeah. So you buy low and you sell high. I don't yeah. know. But it's it's this is like this is why it's it seems that a, a, some of what's happening is semi irrational, you know. It's it's it, it almost doesn't always make sense. Right. And when we're talking about some of these token sales and these sellouts, like this, they're selling out crazy fast. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense. It's and, completely irrational, JJ. I mean, it's 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 gambling irrational. Like we ha, I just bet the whole house on this. Uh, and I think you know, I think people people are you know they're hearing. About friends that have, you know, maybe made out in in the crypto market, and now they want to get in, and you know they see the price of of Bitcoin, and they see the price of others, you know that, um, you know have like, you know large volumes of 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 shit of a number of tokens and, out and there. They don't spend the at least a month it takes to to learn about these things. Right. They're just you know they they're throwing money at it. Um. You know I hear more and more about it from you know acquaintances that. You know, knew that I, you know, they knew that I knew something about Bitcoin, but they're not into it. Well, now, you know, they're hearing it in the news, so they're asking me questions about it, uh, and, not, and and that's happening everywhere, right? So uh, more and more people are hearing because it's just in the news all the time. Yeah. Well, Darren had a quick exit out, so he won't be with our our, our final wrap up. But uh, before we're through, there's, you know, it's like Ethereum has been. They reached their twenty billion dollar market cap. Now, obviously, we talked about market caps, they, you know, good and bad, you know, double-edged sword sort of thing. But they reached it in the span of, what, three and a half years or so, something like that. In Bitcoin, uh, it took them over eight. Well, well I mean, I, I remember what, a, couple of month, a couple of months ago, Ethereum was $5 billion market cap, mm-hmm. May, you know, maybe yep. four. And so it's gone up a lot. Uh, but there's also been a lot of, you know, interest in it. There's been, there's now interest from the financial industry. You have, you know, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. You have other types of projects, uh, you know, Ledger pro- Hyperledger Project. And you so, know, it, yes. it, it, so, so th- there's a lot of interest in this consortium. You know, they're hiring developers, and the developers that they're hiring are, you know, learning the smart contract solidity of, of Ethereum. So that raises, I think that raises the value of the potential of Ethereum, and thus, I think you know at twenty billion, if you compare it to Bitcoin, um, which is you know not quite double that, but when you compare it to Bitcoin, I think it's I think it's a fair value at this point for the potential I see out there. But to your point, we see a lot of these ICOs that not all of them can succeed, and and you know you have to be careful unless you're just rolling the dice and throwing money at things that you think might spike up and try to get out. And, you know, there are people that are comfortable with that. Um, but, you know, there, there can also be a big downtrend. So, yeah, that's the thing is like, OK, you know, what what might happen and, and very well has happened in the past is that things have spiked up for a brief moment. And then they've they've fallen back down to some. So maybe not as low as they were. But and, I, and, th- and there are a lot of people that said, well, I'm not going to go uh, and buy Ethereum at a hundred dollars. It's too expensive. You know, I, I need to get into something cheaper. Well, you know, it's gone out, gone up two point three times today uh, since that price. So, um, it, and I think that's warranted. You know, I do find it surprising that it's it's very quick. Uh, but we again, we the, this last spike from two hundred is basically around the the news of the Chinese exchanges going yeah. online. So, so it's it's valid that it's going to go up a little bit. We have a lot more demand from a whole new market. Yeah, no, that's a big thing. And the other point about Ethereum, uh, the, the market cap rising and whatnot, is think about all these token sales where they're accepting tokens other or, or currencies other than Ethereum-based currencies, where they're accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin, Waves, and some of these other uh, blockchains. That you know, there all that all that fund, all that fungible uh, cash, if you will, digital cash, is coming into the Ethereum marketplace. And it's being invested in some of these these uh, these new co- uh, tokens and these new uh, platforms and services, so that it's sort of like the the it, it's the, the gate, market it, right, cap it's is the gateway, justified. It's it's the gateway to get into the you know the Ethereum tokens is you know you get Ethereum first. So uh, as more and more people want to get into the tokens. They have to buy ether first, so that's you know well, increasing the, the demand. Well, not only that, but like like I said, the, the whole thing that the token sales are also allowing you to pay in Bitcoin, and so now you have the Bitcoin money leaving Bitcoin basically, and then entering Ethereum, which it'll just get sold, of course, and, and liquidated to to fund something, of course, to pay someone or some developers. You know, that's 
the whole thing is, is, is all these projects are supposed to hire people that are going to build the rest of this platform and make it awesome. So, so you know what? This has sort of been an episode about trading. It's about uh, economics, the markets, and just being more rational. And we're really trying a more rational um, t- and tempered approach to things because it's the, the, the market is volatile enough. And if you, if you sort of you grab on too hard, you're going to get taken for a ride. That's how it works. And so, you know, I mean, maybe I, 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 always like to, I like to stick with the fundamentals. Look at what the project is, who's involved, their reputation, past projects, and, and, and look at the potential of it. You know, really give it some thought. Is there a business case for this that isn't already covered by another project? Excellent. Well, this is not and should not be considered investment advice. This is just a a discussion about data, about our experience, and about common sense, really. I think that's what it really is, and I don't think that's illegal. Uh, just a reminder, you can tune in to Cash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of, of this awesome content, including special episodes, bonus content, and the uh, other thing I talked about, the crypto market reports, that sort of stuff. You can tune in... Uh, We've got, uh, here we go, the music, yes! Subscribe to our podcast and Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Here in the studio with you, it's JJ. Pedro. And Darren was with us as well earlier. For Neo Cash Radio.